Greetings adventurers and welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. My name is David and today we find ourselves in Dover, Ohio. We are here to explore Ernest Werther, a genius at his craft. So we are here of course at the Ernest Werther Museum. Tag along as we check it out. We're going to a place that you've never heard of before. It's One thing that nobody ever doubted is that Ernest Werther was a master craftsman. Just a glimpse at one of his pieces is enough to leave you amazed and awed. You'll be even further shocked to learn that he never had any formal training with any of the carving that he did and was completely self-taught. Ernest was the son of two Swiss immigrants who happened to settle here in Dover, like many did in that day. Unfortunately, his father passed away when Ernest was only three years old. To help pick up the slack for the family, Ernest was forced to get a job at an extremely early age. His chore ended up being to take the family cows out to pasture. Soon he was doing that for everyone in his neighborhood. This would earn him the nickname Mooney, which meant Bull of the Herd, and would stick with him for the rest of his life. This is Ernest's original workshop, and the museum is actually built all off of it, but they've kept it just like it was when he was around. You can peek inside and get a little look behind the mind of the genius. Now, while performing his duties, taking the cows back and forth, young Mooney stumbled upon a knife in the road. Just playing around with it, he grabbed a piece of wood and began whittling. A lifelong passion began from that very moment. Looking around his workshop, you can tell that he came a long way from the boy out in the cow pasture. Along with some works from his earlier days, there's also this amazing chain up here. This is actually one continuous carving. This is one piece of wood that was made into this chain, completely unbroken, as well as this walking cane here. This was all one piece of wood that he started at the top and whittled completely down to get the shape that it is now. Uh, absolutely incredible. You can already tell why he was deemed a master carver. Trains and machinery were a very big passion for Mooney. At the age of 14, he left the cow pastures behind and went to work in the American Sheet and Tin Plate Mill. His whittling was just a side hobby that he did for fun. During these fun whittling sessions, he discovered that if you take a piece of wood, he could make just 10 cuts to it and it would yield an actual working pair of pliers. This delighted Mooney to no end. For the rest of his life, he would create thousands upon thousands of pairs of pliers, sometimes even creating them into intricate works of art. He really liked them. As a matter of fact, it's estimated that Ernest created about 750,000 pliers in his lifetime. At first they were just for souvenirs or people that came to visit him, and eventually he began selling them for a nickel apiece to help fund the beginning of this very museum. Later on, as his fame grew, he was invited onto The Tonight Show, where he showed off being able to make the pliers in just 10 cuts, and actually performed creating a pair of them in less than 10 seconds. Absolutely incredible. Don't get it wrong though, he did create more than just pliers and trains. This was a lot of really intricate doll furniture he created, just because he was bored, and look how beautiful they are. This little chest is really nice as well. And then, of course, some more pliers, just, you know, for good measure. Mooney didn't mind working in the mill. It definitely gave him what he needed to help support his family. But as his talents in wood carving grew, it slowly became a bigger part of his life until it had completely taken over and was pretty much his career and sole hobby. On the walls here, they've taken apart a couple of his more intricate engine designs for the trains and other machines, and look at how detailed 
every single little piece was. Mooney was obsessed with knowing how things worked, and once he found out, he would carve it. It's incredible to think that all of this was just a simple block of material until he got at it with his knife. Now, though wood carving was, of course, his main passion, he also had a strong love for history. So a lot of the trains and machinery that he carved were famous trains that actually existed and took place in different events or were important for one reason or another. Despite never having a formal education, Ernest overcame it to truly be a genius of our age. As he did work in a steel mill when he was younger, Ernest knew his way around uh, how to make blades and such, so knives were one of his favorite things to create, and that's what he used for all of his whittling and carving. Behind me, these are the six different knives and the 139 blades he created specifically for his carvings. Each one of the blades is individually made to cater specifically to something that he wanted to carve. So they're all very, very different, but they all end in that same kind of hook there so that he could put these in to any handle he wanted to. And if you look closely, you can also see that the shape of the knives changed to better fit his hand as he grew older. So as his hand changed, so did his knives. One of the really great creations that Mooney made is behind me here. This is a steel mill representing the one that he used to work at. And we are actually about to see this in action. They're going to turn it on for us so we can see it moving. So it was already incredible that he was able to carve such intricate little people and details of the shop. But the fact that it was an actual working machine and that the figures move and perform their tasks just blows me away. This is a crazy cool machine. It managed to hold up after all these years and is still better quality than most things you see made a lot of places today. Seeing the top of it is already very impressive in itself, but if you look below it you can actually see the machinery and the parts that go into moving this and it's just really, really cool. I've never seen anything like this. However, even more intricate than the mill was the plier tree. He took a single massive block of walnut and turned it in to this amazing creation that forms 511 interlocking pairs of pliers. This piece was showcased at the 1934 World's Fair in Chicago. There, Ernest was able to give a demonstration to Robert Ripley of Ripley's Believe It or Not, where he folded every single plier back into the original cube. And we come now to the crown jewel, where Mooney had all of his best and most loved sculptures. This is where you can truly see on display the skill and intricacy that Mooney put into every single one of his pieces. Like I mentioned before, Ernest liked to make sure that his trains and machines had historical significance, so he carved into the base of every single one of these the name of it and a little bit about it of why it was a special train. He also went further back than trains and managed to do a few carvings of technologies that came back all the way to the ancient Greeks and Egyptians. Very impressive. It was almost like a timeline of technology. Now the vast majority of his material was walnut, that was his preferred source, as it was the easiest for him to procure, but he also dabbled in ivory and ebony, as we'll see a little later on, and the white pieces here. What I thought was really cool is that when it came to the ivory, he initially procured it from broken cue balls from pool sets, but later on, he would purposely find the ivory that was a little darker, because it meant that the elephant had most likely died a natural death before having the ivory taken away from it. So, anytime an artist doesn't support something like that, I'm all for it. As you may have guessed, all these little sculptures quickly started to make waves, especially after being showcased at something like a World's Fair. 
He ended up being invited to the New York one as well, and got showcased at Grand Central Station at one point, setting up a whole display there for people to enjoy. And that is where he happened to run into Henry Ford, who loved these sculptures so much he wanted to buy them and offered to set up a permanent display in his own museum and have Ernest come and move in to keep doing all of his carvings there on site. Now, Mooney was honored and touched by this very generous offer, but even after traveling around, Dover is truly where his heart laid, so he refused and stayed home. Mooney also loved creating walking sticks. This one happened to have a bust of Abraham Lincoln at the top, who was his favorite president and top historical figure, kind of a personal hero of his. But he would create a few other ones as well, such as this one that had Lindbergh at the top of it. Though Ernest didn't really want to leave Dover himself, he admired the sense of adventure and innovation that Charles Lindbergh had in his life. So it makes sense that he would carve him. Though Mooney never sold any of his carvings, he didn't mind at all sharing them with the public. So he and his brother Fred developed a road show that went across all 48 continental states. His brother mainly is the one who ran it, and he would go from state to state for a day or two and show off these wonderful carvings. Whatever was left after Fred took his cut was used to get more material to make even more wondrous carvings. Here's a scrapbook of sorts that has several pictures from their trips back and forth east coast to west coast. They definitely got around to a lot of different cities. I did think it was amazing that he never sold any of his pieces because he loved them so much and wanted to share them with everyone. The pliers were really the only thing that people ever bought from him. This is a very special room here. This is the ivory room, and as the name suggests, this is where all of Mooney's carvings are that were just ivory and ebony, and some of these are simply breathtaking. The wood was already gorgeous, especially when he added in little accents of ebony and ivory, but seeing his sculptures in that pure white contrasting with that dark midnight black, these really just jump out at you and leave you speechless. You can tell that Mooney was truly at the height of his skill when he created the majority of these. Everything about them is perfect. I love this chessboard. That was probably one of my favorite pieces in the entire place. But all of these trains even have little people sitting inside the carts on their benches. It is just astonishing. And before we left, we had to see one of the most amazing things in the entire museum this train here which was the funeral train of abraham lincoln done all in black to represent the mourning that the entire country was going through i think ultimately this museum stands as a testament that if you follow your dreams and stay true to your heart amazing things can happen well my name is david and this has been abnormal voyages thanks for tagging along we'll see you in the next one